can't let you do that, Star Fox. This week's character breakdown is Wolf O'Donnell, the leader of Star Wolf, who made his first appearance in Star Fox 64 for the Nintendo 64 in 1997. Wolf's first appearance technically would have been in the cancelled Star Fox 2 on the Super Nintendo. Wolf was also an unlockable character in Star Fox Assault, marking his first playable appearance, and Wolf has been consistently shown to have the highest physical capabilities of any of the Star Fox pilot characters. What's up YouTube? I'm Choctopus, and this week we're breaking down Wolf, a long-requested character, returning from Brawl, back with a vengeance because he is really good in Ultimate, and... He's a pretty simple character to pick up. He has a lot of easy combos, but they're also very rewarding ones. He does struggle a bit off stage due to poor recovery options, but don't worry because you're going to be crossing your opponents up on stage to pick up those KOs. And remember, this is a weekly series, so drop those votes down in the comment section for next week's character, and let's get into the breakdown. Wolf has a rapid jab that turns into a 3-hit combo, and it's really quick because each attack connects on frame 4. At low percent, it's pretty useful out of a nair or a forward air for some quick damage. When you knock your opponent down, you can jab lock them with jab 1-2, or you can even do two ones and both set up pretty well into a down smash. Next, we're going to talk about Wolf's dash attack, and his dash attack is really good because you can use it to mix your opponent up because you can actually travel through them. It's safe on shield, it's pretty hard to punish, so you can use his dash attack, and it's going to be one of the main attacks that you're going to be using, so if you end up going through them or they shield, you know, you can do dash, and then you can come back at them with a nair and cross them up. Now, when you get close enough, it's going to knock them up, but if you hit them with the wolf's foot, it's going to have more of a horizontal knockback, and this is a pretty good option for killing at a high percent. I think it'll kill somewhere around 120 or 130 towards the end of the stage, so let's bring Fox to 120. So around 130, that's going to kill. He probably could have DI'd out of that, but at 130%, that's definitely going to kill Confirm. Next, let's talk about Wolf's Smash Attacks, and they're all viable kill options as they're all strong, and it's very easy to fall into a habit of spamming them because they do kill early, but they also have a lot of end lag, so they're easily punishable. So I would say use them more conservatively than running around just spamming F smashes and, and down smashes, but they do have their uses. Like I said, they kill early. F smash can kill somewhere around 70% towards the end of the stage, and this is more for a hard read on your opponent. So if an opponent is rolling up to the stage or they do have a bad landing, you can punish with an F smash. Next, we have Wolf's Down Smash, which is this claw swipe that hits both sides. It's great for excessive rolling, and it's strong as well, so you can pick up a kill pretty early. Um, it does have a sweet spot, so if you hit your opponent with the tip of the claw, which is a little further away than being right on top of them, it'll deal more damage, have increased knockback, and as you saw, we were able to kill Fox at 70% there with an uncharged Down Smash. I think this is a way better attack than F Smash because... You can use it to cover ledge as well. You can two-frame your opponent if they're coming back to the ledge because it reaches under. Also, you can use it to hit your opponent if they roll back on. Down smash is also really good in a tech chase situation because if your opponent doesn't tech, you can catch them with a down smash. And last, we have Wolf's up smash, which is a great anti-air move because it reaches pretty high. Also, it pulls in from the side, so you can get your opponent from the front or the back. And it has pretty decent reach, so you don't have to be directly on top of them to catch them with it. Next, we're going to talk about Wolf's special move, starting with his Blaster, which is his neutral B. And out of all the spaces, Wolf definitely has the best one. This is a great zoning tool. It travels pretty far, and it does good damage for a projectile. You can use it to build damage from afar, but it does have a lot of end lag, so use it when your opponent's grounded. But if they're jumping, and you're using your Blaster, they can jump over and easily punish you. So don't just run around blindly splamming his Blaster. Blah, 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 splamming, spamming his blaster. That's a tongue twister. Try saying that. Blindly spamming his blaster. Go ahead, do it right now. Anyway, it's good for ledge guarding because it causes your opponent to flinch. So if you can catch your opponent with it off the stage, you can give their recovery, as I did not do there. But let's try. I mean, Fox has a good recovery. It travels pretty far, so he'll make it back to the stage. But opponents with poor recoveries, use it to gimp. A couple additional things you should know about Wolf's Blaster. It'll deal different damage depending on where you're standing, so from max distance, it won't deal as much damage as 
let's say the, let's call this the mid range, which is not too close, but not too far. And then you have close range, which is the weakest of the three. Unless of course you're right on top of them in which Wolf will hit with the bayonet and actually it'll hit twice and that'll be the most powerful. But you never wanna use your blaster if there's a chance of being punished. So using it from far away is probably the best. If you're up close, I don't know if I would use it because there's better options. So someone has a bad landing or on shield, it's not the best option to use this blaster up close. You know, you can maybe use a tilt or a smash attack or something else. Next, we have Wolf Side B, which is his Wolf Flash. Now, this can be used as a horizontal recovery, but you gotta be careful when using it because you won't always snap to ledge. If you use it and you end up on the stage, if your opponent's just sitting there, that's an easy punish because there's a lot of end lag. You can angle it higher or lower by hitting up or down on the control stick after you use it. So, as opposed to just going in one direction, you can angle it higher or you can go a little bit lower. As far as using it for an attack, it's a good kill confirm, but you wanna use it very situationally because you can end up self-destructing. So if you're a beginner, I recommend not using it as much because if you end up going off the stage with your wolf flash, you can't jump, you can't do up B, you can't recover, nothing. So you're going to self-destruct. But if you can time it well and you know your angles and your combos, and you are a seasoned wolf player, chances are you're also not watching this video, but it does combo pretty well out of a late up air, uh, sorry, a late forward air, and it will spike. If we can show it off, that is. There we go. But you see, I'm not coming back, so be a stock ahead or just be really confident. Next, we have Wolf's Down B, which is his reflector, and it does exactly what you think it would. It reflects projectiles. Now, it can also reflect opponents on startup, so it'll hit them from the front or the back, knock them at, I think it's like a 65 or 70 degree angle, and it will only do it on startup. So if your opponent touches your reflector after you've been holding it, it's not going to deal any damage. Now, unlike Fox's reflector, Wolf's down B won't give him any hang time in the air. It won't slow him down. It's going to fall pretty normally. And finally, we have Wolf's up B, which is his fire wolf, and similar to Fox and Falco, you can angle it in any direction that you want. However, it does not go very far, so Wolf's not really the type of character you're going to be chasing deep off stage with. I mean, you can go for your occasional forward air or back air or neutral air, but don't go too low, don't go too far out. You can use his side B if you do find yourself in a bind far out here, because it does have some good horizontal recovery, but if you're too far under the stage, like over here, you're not making it back. With that being said, if you knock your opponent off the stage, Make sure that you have your second jump so you can try to recover. It's also influenced by slopes, so if you come at the stage, if you're not exact, you know, you can travel along a slope on a stage to, to grab the ledge. It's not like Ness's up B where if you hit the stage, you're gonna end up, well, we died there. You're gonna end up bouncing off the stage, so if you're not exact, you're not sure where to go, you can always do it towards the, the slope and Wolf will travel alongside it. Now, as far as on-stage uses go, it's a little tough to use on stage because, like we said earlier, it doesn't have great distance, has a lot of end lag. So if you do mess up, your opponent can punish you. You can use it to land on an opponent if uh, if they're trying to come at you with an anti-air attack, but it's not like Ganondorf's down B, where you can just travel across the distance of Final Destination by using it. You can use it in some tech chase situations, you know, you want to chase your opponent, they're not gonna roll. You can hit them with the up B, you can use it for some mix-ups, but other than that, I wouldn't really use it that much. And as far as the recovery goes, like I said, don't chase too deep, because even if you're just slightly here and you angle it wrong, you're not gonna make it back to the stage. Next up, we have Wolf's tilts, and his tilts are pretty good, and you're going to be using them a lot, starting with his forward tilt, which is a multi-hit attack. And this thing has some pretty good range, which makes it a great spacing tool because it reaches out pretty far. And like most forward tilts, you can angle it upward, you can do it straight, or you can angle it downward. Now, if you do it downward, it will actually slightly reach through the bottom of the stage. So you can catch your opponent if they're hanging on the ledge or if they're trying to recover. You can hit them with that down angled F tilt. Now at high percents, it's a good kill option as well. It reaches out pretty far. So once you have your opponent up to like 130, Towards the end of the stage, it's a good option for picking up that KO. 
Next we have his up tilt, which is this hopping front kick, and it's good as an anti-air if you don't want to commit to an up smash. You can also use it in combos, and starting at 35%, it works nicely out of a latent air, because then you can launch your opponent and you can start doing forward airs, or you can even begin a juggle combo and do some up airs. And then we have Wolf's Down Tilt, which is this low kick. This is a great combo extender. It also has a 40% chance to trip your opponent, like Fox just did. At low percents, a good combo with it, being that it's good for extending combos, you can do a late nair into a down tilt. If they trip, you can dash grab, do an up throw, and then you can follow with either an up air or you can follow with a forward air. So the whole combo would be, come on, trip, there we go, and we knocked him up. Or you can do it with a forward air. And then we have Wolf's air attacks, starting with his Nair, which, similar to Link, he does this kick. You can fast fall out of it. It has a really, really long-lasting hitbox, and you can do either a soft Nair or a hard Nair. Now, a hard Nair is when you hit your opponent with the actual extension and has more knockback and will deal more damage. A soft Nair is when you hit with an already extended leg. It's one of Wolf's best attacks, and in neutral, you can use it a lot, especially if your opponent is approaching with a jump, because it has a really long-lasting hitbox. It's also good for starting combos. You can do a late nair virtually into any tilt or into jabs at low percents. You're going to use it a lot for mix-ups, and it's safe on shield, so if your opponent is shielding, you can use it all day long. Now, some good combos with it. At low percents, you can do a late nair into a down tilt, and if your down tilt does trip, you can follow up with a dash grab up throw. And then from there, you can either do an up tilt or a forward tilt. Somewhere starting around 35%, you can actually do it into an up tilt and it'll launch your opponent. And then you can follow up with, like I said, a uh, forward air or an up air and start a juggle from there. It's also great for gimping a recovery because it does have a long lasting hitbox. So you can neutral air fast fall and try and knock your opponent further away. Fox's recovery is pretty decent, so he was able to come back. But, like I said earlier, do be careful because Wolf does not have the best recovery. Wolf's forward air is another great attack, and all of his air attacks have very low landing lag. Maybe with the exception of down air, but they're all really good and you can use them a lot. His forward air starting at 20% will combo into itself. It's also a good combo setup, and what I mean by that is it's good for doing a lot more forward airs. At low percents, you can even do a dash up tilt after it and then follow up with a neutral air, or you can follow up with another forward air. Off the stage, it has some pretty good kill potential, so you can use it to deny your opponent and then make it back to the stage. Next up, we have Wolf's back air, which is this back kick, and unlike his forward air, it is much stronger and has more startup time, so his forward air doesn't launch nearly as well. Now, Fox is a featherweight, so he's pretty light, and in the middle of a stage around 100%, you can actually kill him if sweet spotted. So that was not a sweet spot. So as you can tell, the leg is the sour spot. But if you hit with the heel, you can get a kill pretty early. And then we have Wolf's up air, which is this overhead swipe. And it covers a pretty good portion of space over Wolf's head. Now, you can use this as a juggle tool at virtually any percent out of an up throw. And it'll work. You can also use a falling up air as a combo starter. And... I don't see this talked about as much, so it may not be as practical, but a forward air launches your opponent more horizontally, whereas if you hit your opponent with a falling up air, depending on what side you're on, it'll launch them vertically. So starting around 30%, if you hit them from the front, you can follow up with either a forward air or another up air. And if you hit them from the back, it's a good setup into a back air. Now, like I said, it's not the most practical setup, but it does work. And then last, we have Wolf's Down Air, which is this downward swipe with his claws. It has a really slow startup time, but it is strong in the sense where this thing will spike, and it will hurt. Forward Air launches at a pretty good angle to set up into a down air, and while it's not a true combo and your opponent can DI out of it, I think Wolf's Down Air, his spike, is probably one of the easier spikes in the game to land because the hitbox is definitely more forgiving if you hit from the front, the side, whatever, and it'll still spike your opponent. The attack is a little risky to use off stage because it does take a while to start up, and Wolf does have a bad recovery. However, you can use it on stage because I think it sets up pretty consistently into other attacks. And finally, we come to Wolf's throws, and Wolf has some pretty good throw combos that you're going to want to use often. 
So you have his forward throw, which is good at higher percents for setting up a tech chase situation where you can do a dash attack or you can even do an up B. You also have his back throw, which is a good high percent kill option towards the end of the stage. So if you're rolling around with your opponent and you end up at the end of the stage and you can grab them, do a back throw. You have his down throw, which hits the ground and launches horizontally. And at low percents, you can actually combo this into a dash attack. And then you have his up throw, which I want to say up to around 80% will work into either an up air or a forward air. That's it for Wolf's Breakdown this week. He's a great character, and I'm glad he's back. He's definitely my favorite to use out of the spaces. And if you're looking for a new character to pick up, he's easy to learn, but he's also very rewarding. And make sure to make use of his blaster to space your opponent. And when the time comes, rush them down. Now go get some Ws with the leader of Star Wolf. If you liked this video, a like would very much be appreciated, and it will help me not starve to death. There's also more content like this on my channel, so if this is your first video, I encourage you to go check out some of the other stuff that I've done and subscribe if you see things you like. As always, thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far into the video, and we'll catch you next time.